God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because He lives. faith and hope and aren't you thankful that we have a Savior in whom we can put our trust and faith and know that he's going to see us through. Amen. 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 You know, I was reminded of um, several years ago, Deanna and I were vacationing in Newport, Rhode Island. And the only bad thing about it was we decided to go in March and it's still wintertime up there then. And um, we had something very unexpected happen. We got snowed in. And uh, I had to get back to Oklahoma City for some reason for a Sunday morning. I don't know. I, I wasn't planning on taking a Sunday off. And so we were scrambling because the airlines called and said, Hey, uh, Mr. Hill, uh, we've canceled your flights. And so I, I, I am just stuck, and, and Deanna and I were fortunate enough, you know, the hotel was understanding, sure, you can stay as long as you need to, as long as you pay. And um, so I, I stayed on the phone for what seemed like hours. And finally, I, I spoke with a representative at American Airlines, and, and she just asked this question. She said, are you willing to try something different than what you were initially planning to do? And I said, well, what do you mean? Well, your flight is supposed to leave out of Providence, and you're not getting out until Sunday. Can you get to Boston? And I said, sure, you know, I'm one of these. If there's a will, there's a way. And I had a rental car, and so I wasn't worried about crashing it in the snow. And, 
And so we started out and, and we made it to Boston and I thought, smooth sailing. They were going to put us up in a nice hotel for a couple of nights and get us out and we were going to be back home for Sunday morning service. Well, I thought everything was taken care of, but that's when we hit a snag. You see, I had never driven in the Boston area. I had never been outside of Boston Logan Airport. I mean, I'd flown in there several times. But I kept looking for rental car return. My GPS couldn't catch up. The roads weren't marked properly. And it wasn't but just about 30, 45 minutes. I looked at Deanna and I said, we are circling this airport like the planes are circling overhead. I don't know when we're going to reach our destination. I don't know what I should do. And so I did something that goes against every fiber of my being. I quit. I started to just stop right there in the middle of the interstate and say, hey, maybe they can tow us to the rental car place. <laughs> but I did see our hotel. And so I swung into the hotel, and this is what went against what I am and who I am. I went in and I asked for directions. I found somebody who I didn't know, and so I thought, well, you know, here I'm putting my trust in an unknown voice. I'm trusting this individual that he's going to know what he's doing and what I need to do. And so I dropped Deanna off there at the hotel because she was getting tired of me just, you know, fussing at GPS and all that kind of stuff. And so I said, well, honey, let me kiss you goodbye in case I never return. <laughs> but I took the advice of someone I really didn't know, but I trusted that they knew what they were talking about. I tried it one time. Would you like to know where I wound up? Rental car return at Boston Logan Airport. And I thought, you know, why didn't I do this to begin with? Why didn't I ask for help? Why didn't I listen when someone was trying to tell me what to do? Well, you know, before I finally realized and enjoyed the success of arriving at my destination, I had to make some decisions. Decisions that were going to affect the outcome of our little journey. I could have decided to, no, I'm going to do this on my own. We are going to keep circling this airport until we find where we are supposed to be. Or I could have given up and said, we're going back to Newport, Rhode Island, and we're going to wait until Sunday morning to catch our flight. Or I could decide to listen to the advice of someone who knew what they were talking about. You know what? Isn't that a little bit like life? I mean, you know, in life, we know where we want to go most of the time. We know what we want to do. We know what we want to accomplish. We can look out in the future and say, here I am today. That's where I want to be by this date or this time. And we think in our mind, okay, I know all that needs to be done to accomplish my task. But you know, there are times when we are faced with decisions when we find ourselves asking the question that we've asked every Sunday during this year, what do I do now? Times when we can't see our destination. Times when we need help. Now it's in these times that we find ourselves frustrated, we find ourselves discouraged, and you know what often causes us to make quick decisions, rash decisions that we're later going to regret. It causes us, and I want you to listen, to hurry more and trust less. Did you get that? Our indecisiveness causes us to get in a hurry. And we make those decisions that are not good decisions. Now, do you know that is the perfect example of a passage of Scripture that we're not using today, but that I use often because I love it. This is an example of us leaning more on our own understanding instead of the wise words of God. Now, let me tell you, in our text today, we see the people of Israel 
we find that their existence could have been, well, they probably described their existence kind of like I described our journey to the airport. Their life could be summed up by saying they thought they could get to their destination on their own, but boy, were they wrong. You see, the people of Israel in the Old Testament constantly found themselves wandering around in circles, going from place to place, but never getting to where they really and truly should have been. They find freedom, but then they go right back into captivity, right back into exile, right back into slavery. And you kind of just wonder, okay, when is it all going to stop? Are they destined to do this until everyone is dead and gone? Well, you know, there came a day in the life of the existence of the people of Israel when they found themselves low in numbers, low in spirit, and basically low on the totem pole of life. And it was in the midst of their despair, their times of almost giving up, that God speaks some words of encouragement through His prophet. Now this morning, I don't know where you are in your journey. You may be just circling the airports of life thinking, well, I've got to eventually land or else... I'm just destined to just be this way from now on. I want you to hear the words of God this morning through his prophet as I read them to you. They come from Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 28. And I'm reading this from the New Living Translation, but if you want to turn in your Bible, I, I, I don't know what translation you got, but you may want to see that there's a couple of differences here, not in meaning, but yet in wording. Listen, it says, Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Praise the Lord. That is the promise of God to His people. Now, you know, there's something that stood out to me when I first started studying this passage of Scripture. I read it from the New Living Translation that I shared with you, but there was something that sounded strange about it. I thought, well, wait a minute. I don't think that's the way I initially learned that. I mean, the New Living Translation says, those who trust in the Lord. Did you catch that? What did it used to say in the translations we used? They that wait upon the Lord. And some even say those who put their hope in the Lord. Now, I have always heard it, those that wait upon the Lord. But you know what? I, I kind of found that one difficult. Because I fit into the same category that some of you fit in. Waiting is just not our strong suit. I mean, I know people, and I may be one of them, that the day the Lord was passing out patience, we were absent. We were somewhere else. And waiting is something that just doesn't come natural to us. Am I right? I'm glad three of you are honest. I'm going to expect these altars to be full at the end of the service. I read that, and I kept thinking, okay... I can trust. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Uh, I can put my hope in God. Th that's pretty easy. Man, I can do these. But what we're about to see is it's going to take all three of these elements in order for us to be able to accomplish and achieve all of the things that God has in store for us. In order for us to make it through this journey that we call life successfully, and eventually end up at the destination that God has in store for us. Now, some of you may be asking the question, Pastor, does this really make a difference? I mean, when we talk about trusting and waiting and hoping, it, does it really make a difference? 
Can it help me understand what I need to do now and why I need to do it? Well, I believe the answer to that question is absolutely it can help us. In fact, I see some things here in this passage as we look at these three elements of our life that could assist us in answering what we need to do now. So would you just follow along with me? First off, I think we need to start by learning how to wait. Learning how to wait. Now, we've come to realize that, as we read in this passage of Scripture, that God's understandings, God's ways, God's desires are so far above us that our human mind scrambles to try and comprehend, right? Now you think about the love of God and how that is so far out that, that we can't really grasp it. I mean, how can a God who declares and demands that we are to live holy lives, how can He still love those who don't? But yet His Word says He loves them. Is He pleased with that? No. Are they going to stand account for it? Yes. Is eternity out there, a heaven and a hell, and, and we make that choice? Absolutely. I mean, that's truth. But how can God still love someone that just despises Him? It blows our mind, right? How can God be so patient with you and with me? When we say, Lord, I'm going to serve you, I'm going to do this, I'm never going to do that again, and we find ourselves in that vicious circle around the airport looking for the exit and thinking, am I destined for this to be my life from now on? We can't begin to measure the depths of His understanding or even figure out how it says His ways are everlasting. We can't grasp how... He never grows weak, He never grows weary, or how He is willing to give strength and power to us in our greatest moments of need. And yet, we are in such a hurry that we get ahead of His timing. Or else we get off of the ways that God says, I want you here doing this, and we're over here because we're in such a hurry that we get around God in the passing lane. Sound familiar? Ever found yourselves there? When you thought with all of your heart, this is where I'm going, this is where I need to be, and you start out and it's like, what in the world am I doing? Where is God and we have the tendency to, to say, God, why have you forsaken me? And God is saying, I'm still right here. I'm where I initially wanted you to be. So you need to turn around and come back and, and let's line things up. God never gets in a hurry. His timing is always right. He knows what He is doing at all times. And this is going to crush some of you. We don't. I'm sorry, you're not always right. Now, do you still love me? I mean, <laughs> you don't know how hard that is for me. I, I was joking one day in the office and I said, oh man, I made the first mistake I've made this year. Well, hey, that was last week sometime and everybody just kind of rolls their eyes and walks out of the room. They, they, don't, they, they, they don't get it. We're not always right, but God is. So doesn't it make sense for us to stop being in such a hurry and just wait and let God show us where we need to go? That's plain and simple. They that wait upon the Lord... And while we're waiting, He's going to start renewing our strength. He's going to start giving us the rest that we need physically, emotionally, spiritually. He's going to prepare our mind and our lives to move forward. And we're going to accomplish a whole lot more after having waited on Him and allowing Him to lead us than we ever could have striking out on our own. Make sense? Well, here's the second thing. We need to learn to trust His direction. Now, you know already that trust means, you know what it means? 
Trust is to believe in the truth. It's to believe in the ability. It's to believe in the strength and power of something or someone. I mean, we put our trust in some things without even thinking. But when we are told that we need to put our trust in God, we find it a little more difficult for some reason. Because we want to be in control. Now, this is one of the many truths that the people of Israel knew, experienced, but yet it seemed to go in one ear and out the other. Or else in the midst of their struggle, they forgot that, well, God's directions are right and we just need to trust in them. I I, I love reading in the Psalms. I try to read in the Psalms daily uh, along with the rest of my devotional reading. And I came across a passage the other day. It was in Psalm chapter 9. It was verse 9 and 10 where the psalmist seemed to grasp this understanding. Listen to what he said. The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. One of the many truths that you and I should latch on to, one of the things that we can depend on, instead of putting our trust in the government or in all these other things around us, let us put our trust in the Lord knowing that He will see us through. His power is unlimited. His ability is unmatched. We can't figure it out. We can't understand it. But we need to come to the place where we just say, Lord, here I am. There you are. I want, to, I want to be all that you desire me to be. And let us follow him. Well, here's the third thing that we need to learn to do. And that is to place our hope in his faithfulness. Placing our hope in his faithfulness. Now, hope is one of those words like love. It's kind of hard to understand. If I were to ask you, well, well, define for me the word hope, you would say, well, it's hoping that something happens, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that deep longing for something to transpire, for something to take place. And I think that an element that we often neglect when we're thinking of hope is, okay, we desire these things, but do we put a real belief with it? Lord, I hope you do this, but okay, in my heart, I believe it's going to happen. That's the true biblical definition of hope. Well, investing our expectations and desires in him because he is faithful gives us this greater sense of hope. Hope is strengthened when we learn to to stand on his promises. I love this passage of scripture Because the the, the writer, the prophet speaking because he was, you know, encouraged by God or the words were given to him to speak to the people. You can look and see that he truly believes what he's saying. And listen to some of the things that he says. When you put your trust, hope, faith, desires, when you wait upon the Lord, certain things are going to be present for you. You're going to find that your strength is renewed. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but how many of you could just use a good dose of energy right now? I'm talking physically. I'm talking mentally, emotionally. I mean, who here can't use or couldn't stand to have just a a charge of energy, of faith and strength? And he says, if we will do these things, our strength will be renewed. Renewed. How would you at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, how would you like to have the energy that you see in these little ones that walk through the doors on Sunday? Can't you just see yourself running up and down the aisles? Yeah. Crawling under the pews, turning somersaults out in the parking lot, you know, I... Infused with new strength. Well, that's just the beginning. He says you will soar like eagles above all of the garbage of this world, 
our faith can take us to heights to where it's like we are, we are seeing God face to face. He goes on. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not feel faint. Waiting, trusting, hoping in the Lord. Now again, folks, I know some of you are going through difficult times. But I don't know what each of us is facing. I don't know how you feel this morning. I don't know how you would rate your spiritual relationship with the Lord today. Maybe it's at an all-time low. Maybe you feel yourself frustrated because you just can't find answers to the questions that you have. Maybe you're tired of asking, well, what do I do now? Can I just paraphrase something here for you? As we ask those questions, have you never heard, never understood that God is the everlasting creator of the universe. He is the one who will never grow tired or weary. No one can measure not just the depths of his understanding, but of his love, of his patience, his kindness, his mercy, and his grace. Even so, he will strengthen you. Praise the Lord. Did you get that? God wants to strengthen you today, right where you are. No matter what you're facing, no matter the doubts you may have for the future, He desires to strengthen you this morning. Doesn't that just thrill your soul? Jesus, today we are thankful that we can turn to you and that we can stand on the promises that are found in your holy word, Old Testament, New Testament. We can believe in these things and we can find the strength that is needed to be victorious. Today, Lord, I, I pray for everyone that's here everyone that's watching this message on, on, online. I pray that you would help us for a moment to just lay aside the rush and the hurry and just wait and let your spirit speak to us. I pray right now that you would help us, Lord, to trust in you even though it's difficult at this point. We've got to have hope, Lord. And so our hope is firmly in you. We can get discouraged. We can get distressed. We can get depressed over all that life throws at us. Or... We can throw ourselves into your arms, O oh Lord, and let you minister to our heart and soul. Let you strengthen us and renew us so that we can make it through the rest of our time on this earth victorious. Lord, would you just touch lives, change hearts right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures he makes me lie down. He restores my soul and leads me on for his name, for his great name. Surely good. Surely mercy right beside me all my days. 
and I will dwell in your house forever and bless your holy name you prepare a table right before me in the presence of my enemy and though the arrow flies and the terror of night is at my door i'll trust you and surely goodness surely mercy right beside me Right beside me 